Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Muse Themes. We have a special video for you today on the top five SEO essentials that you can do to your site in Adobe Muse to make sure that Google has a good chance of finding it. Now these are often things that people overlook completely or they don't even know exist in Muse, but they're really important to ensure that Google can see your site, understand its content, understand its structure, and hopefully this helps you increase your ranking and find more clients or make more sales or whatever the goal of your website is. So with that said, let's get started on our top five SEO tips. Tip number one, the most essential thing that you can do is use proper page titles in Muse. So let me explain what a page title is. If I go ahead and just Google something like top websites, you can see the first page that comes up is this Alexa top 500 global sites. And if I click on that link, you can actually see that that page title stays here in the browser tab. So it says Alexa top 500 global sites. This line that's displayed on a search engine result page, 99% of the time, that is the title of the page. And you can set the page title in Muse. So if I jump over to a Muse site, and with just this kind of default site, let's preview this in the browser. So once the page loads in the browser, you can see that on the tab for this site, it just says about, that's it. So there's nothing in the page title. When's the last time you clicked on a search result that had just the name about? Never, you would never ever do that. So that's why a page title is so, so essential for your SEO efforts. So how do you set these page titles in Muse? Well, if you download a template or you build a new site, by default, they're just going to show the name of the site or rather the name of the page that you're showing in the plan view here. But if we actually control click or right click on this page and we go to page properties, so we'll click that. Then on the options page, we have two options here. We have a page name and a page title. Now the difference here is the page name is what you're going to see in Muse. It's what's going to appear if you're using, let's say the automatic navigation widget. But the page title is what you're going to see in the browser tab. So we don't want this to be the same as the page name. So I'm going to remove that completely. And now we should look at how to best structure a page title. So as you can see here, a page title is typically the first 50 to 60 characters of your title tag, which is what we're filling in in Muse. And if you look at the structure of common page titles, you've often got things like this, where you've got some keywords and then a break and then perhaps the name of the business. So for the Muse site that we're building, it's called Mail App and it's a business. So let's just go ahead and say email syncing app. And then let's put a break and we'll go mail app for iOS, something like that. There you go, and we'll click OK. So now, when I preview this page in the browser, and I mouse over the tab here, you can see that it says exactly what we put, email syncing app, mail app for iOS. This is essential. You wanna add unique page titles for all of your pages on your website. And remember to try and keep them within that 50 to 60 character limit. Sites like this that have the ellipsis at the end, that means their page title is going a little bit long. And while it's not necessarily a terrible thing, you do wanna keep it within that limit just so that it shows up nicely and to encourage people to click on it on the results page. The second best tip for SEO in Muse is to make sure you're properly using your page description. Now this is really similar to the page title, it's in the same area within Muse, but the page description on a search engine result page is this block of text below the title. It's often a sentence, and this block of text should be used to accurately describe what the page or the site is about. Now you don't wanna stuff it full of keywords so that it's not easy to comprehend, but just write a naturally flowing sentence there and ideally keep it between 150 and 160 characters. Within Muse, you can find the page description within the same location for each page. So if we click page and page properties, this is the same as right clicking on the page in the plan view and going page properties. Then within the metadata tab, we have this thing called description. And this is where you wanna write that simple sentence. 
Make sure that you're writing unique descriptions for each page, something that accurately explains to people what the page is about. And for examples, just perform any search and see how sites like Alexa or sites like Moz.com, which is a very big popular SEO site, are actually writing their page descriptions here. They're generally full of keywords or things that might encourage clicks within their target audience, but they're really simple and they're not overwhelming by any means. The third tip is to make sure you're using headings properly. Now, this is a really kind of hidden feature in Muse that not many people know about, but let me explain to you how this works. First of all, I have a website here with kind of a prominent heading. It says, keep email in sync with mail app. Let's preview that page in the browser. And using the inspector in the browser, which is kind of a development tool, I'm just going to inspect that block of text. And when I do that, you can see here on the code that it's wrapped in a P tag. It says P, keep email in sync with mail app and in the closing P tag. That P tag means it's a paragraph tag, which is kind of the most commonly used tag for any block of text within your site. So what this is telling Google is this is just a regular block of text and there's not really any special importance involved here. Now let's go back to Muse and let's highlight this block of text and I want you to go over to the text panel on the right side. At the bottom of that panel, there's this kind of hidden menu that says paragraph level tag, useful for SEO and accessibility. If I bring down that drop down, we can change this to say it's an H1, a headline tag there. So now when I preview this page in the browser, and once again, I inspect that block of text, So if I zoom in here, you can see that this is now an H1 tag, which means it's a heading one, the most prominent heading on the site. So what you're telling Google now is that there is important text in this area and Google may place emphasis on keywords used in those headings. Now, of course, you don't want to use heading tags for all of the areas or all of the content on your site. That doesn't make sense, but just use it strategically. So this could be a heading one tag and these blocks here could be heading two. So work your way through your site and make sure it's logical and easy to understand and definitely try and include some keywords in your headings. They're really important for SEO. Another way that you can access those paragraph level tags is in addition to the bottom of the text menu here, if you're setting up a paragraph style, so let's create a new style for this block and we'll double click on the style and within that area, you can actually set that paragraph level tag also within the style box here. But some people don't always use styles for all of their text, so it's great if you're setting it within this panel. Our fourth tip is something that's fairly obvious to users who have been using Muse for a long time, but it's something that we get a lot of questions about and we see beginners running into often. And it has to do with using real text on your site and avoiding using image text. So what does this mean? If I preview this page in the browser now, you'll see that the headline area we have here is real selectable text. Basically, Google can actually see and read this text or I could copy it out if I wanted into another application. Well, if I go back into Muse and let's say I wanted to use a different font here. Well, if I'm using the font drop down menu and I wasn't careful, so basically I'm in the web fonts area, that's great, we can use any of those or the standard fonts, that's fine. Well, if I go down all the way to system fonts and it says exports as image, then I get into fonts that we don't actually have the ability to use on the web because a user might not have that font included on their computer. So if I select one of these, you can see it changes just fine in the app, but then I get this little symbol in the corner and it looks like a little kind of text and image. That's a warning telling you that this is going to be image text. So what is image text? Well, let's preview this in the browser now. And even though it looks like text, you can see that I can't actually copy it or I can't select it or highlight it. And that's because it exported it as an image. So if I go ahead and look at this within kind of the code view or I inspect this element, you see that it says it's an image. 
Now, Muse has tried to add some SEO features, which is kind of this alt tag, but in reality, this is a terrible, terrible way for you to have text on your site. It's not taking advantage of web fonts and the ability for Google to kind of see and read and understand this text. So you never, ever want to be using image text in your website. For our fifth tip, let's talk about how to set up and structure links properly so that Google can understand what another page is about by the way that you've included a link to it. So let me show you what this means. Basically on our sitemap here or plan view, we have a page on this site called features and it's the design features of this app. If we're going to link to that page from another page on the site, let's say our about page, if we just include a block of text like this that says click here, and we add a link to that page. When Google sees this block, you're not telling it anything about the page it's about to visit. It's just a generic click here button. It doesn't know where it's going. A much better strategy for this would be to use what's called anchor text. And anchor text means you're doing something like this. Maybe we wanna have something like view at the beginning. And of course, highlight all of these keywords. There, so this link now is much better structured for Google to flow through your site and understand what each page is going to be about. So this is great strategy to have internally to help Google understand all the pages on your site. But where this really comes into play is on external links. So these are links from sites outside of your own into your website. And what I mean by that is if you get a great incoming link from somebody like Adobe, Google is going to place a lot of emphasis on that link. It's basically like Adobe giving you a personal referral and saying that this is a great site to look at. But ideally, if the way that they've structured that link, it shows something that's keyword friendly. Let's say you're a freelance designer based in LA. If they put LA web designer as the text that's actually anchoring the link, Google will see your site as a very reputable resource for an LA web designer. It's much more powerful than having this broad, generic, click here keyword usage. So remember, use anchor text within your links and help Google understand where it's going and why. Here's a bonus tip for you guys that's outside of Muse, but just touches a little bit on an SEO strategy for you. So you can see in kind of in the graphic I have on screen, you have these two pawns. You have one pawn that's much smaller than the other, but it's got a big player within or a big fish within. And then the other pawn is a big pawn, but there's lots of kind of smaller players and it's really busy and active. In terms of SEO, you have a much better shot of ranking well in a smaller pawn. So let me show you an example of this. If you run a business that sells shoes, well, if I'm targeting the search keyword shoes, then when I do that, I'm gonna go up against huge players, shoes.com, Zappos, those types of people. You have zero chance of taking down a billion dollar business in terms of search rankings. It's just not going to happen. So what I recommend is that you reduce the size of the pawn. And what does that mean? It means targeting a tighter niche or a tar smaller target audience. So in this case, you might sell shoes, but they're specific to, you know, outdoor running shoes and maybe they're for beginners, something like that. So what you've done now is reduce the number of potential results that fit that term. And even though the traffic to your site may actually be less because you're targeting such a tight market, that traffic is going to be better quality and they've got a much better chance of actually buying the product. I'd rather have out of 100 people, 10 users that buy, then out of 1,000 visitors, only five. So that's a strategy that I see all the time that people aren't using is they're targeting such broad keywords like web design or print design, and it's really hard to kind of knock down the bigger players in that market. So tighten your niche, become the big fish in the small pond, and I guarantee that you'll see your business grow and your results improve. Thanks again, and best of luck. Cheers.